Hi, this is Lance with Brando Consulting, Fishbowl Experts since 2006. I'm beginning to see that most of the people I talk to are totally missing one of the best features Fishbowl has, and that is the MRP related features. So in this video, I'm going to show you the dates in Fishbowl, the sales order dates, the work order dates, the purchase order dates, and show you how they all come together because Fishbowl has a reporting tool, which I love, the forecast report, which we've edited to make better into the short forecast report. And with all of these tools put together, you can see when your inventory is coming in, if it's going to make it there in time, and when you're scheduled to send it out, and if it's going to be there in time. So here we'll see a, the sales order screen, and I'm gonna come here and click new, I'll just grab us anybody, it doesn't matter who. I'm gonna put in a thousand springs. I'm gonna sell some springs and we get this pop-up. Notice it says the lead time is 10 days. So already we know that we're not gonna be able to fulfill this order today. We're not gonna be able to ship it today because we're short on the inventory. So we need to tell the customer, hey, we can ship it to you in 11 days, right? So we'll have that conversation with the customer. We'll go ahead and add the springs. And notice this date right here, scheduled, is scheduled to today. I'm making this video on March 18th, 2019. So I'm gonna change this date to 10 days or 11 days from now. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, there we go. We should be able to ship it from that date. Now you may not have this column here. If you don't, scroll over to the right, it could be hiding over to the right. These columns can actually move. Yes, that's right, you can move these columns. So grab your date scheduled that's hidden over there to the right and move it over here where, we, where you can see it. Then we'll go ahead and click issue. All right, so we've got our sales order. Now let's go fulfill this order in purchasing. I'm gonna to go to purchasing, click new, add the vendor, and I need to buy all kinds of things from this vendor. So we're gonna just start buying inventory. As a matter of fact, make it even easier, we can go to the auto PO and put in this vendor. And then this date range right here actually looks at the date of the scheduled date on the sales order. So Fishbowl is smart enough to see when it's scheduled to go out, when your inventory is allocated, not just if it's allocated and with the quantity of the allocation, but when it's allocated. So say we have a blank, blanket sales order that's scheduled out like a um, thousand every month and we don't want to purchase for five or six months from now, then you can put a date range here and it sees these dates, okay? So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm gonna, I wanna buy enough to fulfill everything we need about a month out and then click next. And it sees the spring that I need. It sees how many I'm short. So I'll go ahead and accept that and click finish, then open up that PO, and here we are, the number of springs we need to fulfill that order. Now same thing, scroll over to the right and we'll see this hidden column. I'm gonna move it over to the left, <clears throat> and you'll see that this date scheduled, interestingly, is March 28th, not today, which is March 18th. So Fishbowl is smart enough to know that it has a lead time of 10 days and we're probably not going to get it for 10 days. How did Fishbowl get this lead time, you might ask? It calculates this lead time from the moment you click issue on the previous purchase order until the moment you click receive on that previous purchase order. Pretty cool, huh? Fishbowl keeps track of this stuff. And it knows, it's smart enough to say, okay, our lead time is 10 days, you're probably not gonna get it for 10 days. 
So you see this fulfillment date up here it says 318. We'll probably want to mess with that here in a minute, but I'm going to add a few more parts just to demonstrate this a little bit further. This part also had a lead time of 10 days. Now there's another part here, the GR number four or whatever, that's got a different lead time. Let's add some of those just for the fun of it. GR, there we go, that's got a different scheduled date, okay? So this fulfillment date up at the top is not connected to, to any reports or any purchasing tools or sales tools. The real dates that matter are the dates on the lines. So pay attention to the dates on the lines. Now we'll click Save. We've got a new purchase order with these dates. And let's also take a look at another date that's important. That's the work order date. So for all of you manufacturers over there, pay attention to this next one. This is for you. The work orders have a start date and a finish date. So this purchase order, if we were purchasing for a work order, needs to arrive before the work order starts. So we need to schedule this start date to a date after the purchase order arrives. Now this scheduled for finish date needs to be done before the sales order demands it. Now, how do we know if we're getting these dates right? How do we know if the PO is arriving in time, if the work order is scheduled at a time that the inventory is here, and if the work order is scheduled to finish in time for the sales order to, to exit? That's where the forecast report comes in. So Fishbowl has a standard report up here. It's called, we'll go to reports and pull up this forecast report pop this window open so we can see this better. On this report, it tells us today's quantity of the part. Now notice we've got a part number, a description, and the current quantity on hand. Then the next line tells us that a certain purchase order is scheduled to arrive on this date, and that's going to bring the quantity on hand up a certain amount. Now, this purchase order is interesting because it has a zero quantity, so we're going we're gonna to skip that. That just means that it was already received, and so we're going to skip that. That's, I'll just put in a quick plug to make sure you reconcile your purchase orders also so they're not just hanging open like this. But then we see this sales order that is scheduled to be shipped out on this day, and if we don't create a work order or a purchase order to fulfill that sales order by that date, then we're going to be in the red. Notice we've got a red negative sign. That means that we're not going to have enough in time. Now you may have noticed a third problem already, and that is these dates. These dates are in the past. That's a problem. This is probably the most common problem I see with those of you who are just starting to use Fishbowl and didn't, didn't recognize that this date feature was even available. So once you start actually using the dates and scheduling your sales orders and scheduling your work orders and purchase orders, then this problem of these dates being in the past will slowly go away. Now if it's really bothering you, you can go ahead and fix these dates. Let me show you how. This report is equipped with a link to the order that is misscheduled. So today is 318. We're going to reschedule that. I'm going to click on the sales order. I'm going to change this date because it will change this date also. I could do this one, but this one has a nice feature. So I'm going to click on today and then it says, hey, do you want to change the other date? And we say yes. Okay. If we change this date right here, double click, change to the future. It has no feature to say, hey, do you want to change this date? So anyways, just a little, just a little tip. Um, play with this because if you have multiple lines here that have different dates, 
then you won't want to use this date. <clears throat> Anyways, enough said about that. So back to this report. Now that I've changed this sales order date, make sure I click Save. Now that I've changed this sales order date and refresh it, now we'll see this date is in the future. Awesome. So you get the idea. Here's a really good example. This one's got purchase orders, raw goods, sales orders, finished goods. Okay, so um, today we have 100. We've already received the purchase order. And then these work orders are calling for it, and that's why it's a negative. So it's predicting that on this date, it will go down by the quantity that that work order demands. Now, this is a practice file, so it's all over the place, but hopefully this helped you open your eyes to the possibilities of more MRP-related features in Fishbowl. Um, there's one more I didn't show you, and that's on the work order. The bill of material has an estimated duration time. So if you are in the industry where your work order takes an entire day or multiple days or a week, then you'll want to use this estimated time because when you add multi-level work orders, the sub work orders will automatically be scheduled by the duration. So looking forward to more MRP related features from Fishbowl Inventory. Thanks for joining us today in um, March 18th, 2019, version 19.2. We'll see what other MRP-related features Fishbowl comes out with in the future.